Okay, so this video is a direct response to the questions I get from computer science students during my monthly AMAs over at Instagram. Questions like, I'm in my second year of pursuing school for a CS degree. What can I do to set myself up for success after graduation? Or I've just graduated last month. What can I do to increase my chances of landing a good job? Or what is the one advice you'd give to college students? Or the dreaded one, what programming language should I learn in school? I'll answer the last one right away as I've done a million times. What programming language you learn in school does not matter. Okay, with that out of the way, for the rest of this video, I'll talk about six things you must do before you graduate to set yourself up for success in the tech career. All right, let's get started. So there are some core computer science classes that make up the foundation of computational problem solving. There are data structures and algorithms, as well as some basic probability statistics and discrete math classes. Doesn't matter whether you want to specialize in computer science, software engineering, data science, or web design. Anyone going to school for any field related to computer science should take these classes. Now I know some of you keyboard warriors will come and attack me saying how long you've been in the field and you've never had to use data structures and algorithms. Well, just because you've never had to does not mean nobody has to. Okay, I will somewhat agree that you don't have to use complicated algorithms every day, but learning them, especially early in your career, expands your problem solving abilities. And they are required for most technical interviews, so might as well get them done in school. It's going to be much harder to learn algorithms later in life. However, data structures are absolutely mandatory. If you tell me that you've worked in the field of software engineering for a number of years and have never used data structures, I don't know what to tell you. The bottom line is that these classes build up a solid problem solving foundation for you. So just take them and be done with it. You'll thank me later. I know that a lot of you will wait till you graduate or when you apply for your first job to create your resume. Don't do this. Start building your resume as early as freshman year. I know you'll say, but Utsav, I don't have anything meaningful to put on my resume in my freshman year. And that's a valid point, but it's okay. Don't worry about your resume being poor early on because that's the whole idea. As you gain more experience, your resume grows with you. And over the years, you will add stuff to your resume. And at some point you'll have too much stuff in there and you'll start removing or rewording things, uh, shorten it, things like that. And in essence, your resume will go through many iterations of revisions. And as a result, the one you actually end up using for your job application will be quite polished. See, when recruiters screen for potential candidates, your resume typically gets about seven seconds to catch their eye. This means that the last minute scrambled together resume will not cut it. Starting early gives you the time to refine your resume as you refine your own technical skills. I have a few videos on writing good resumes. Check them out to get started. It's too easy to stick with your own group or click during college. While that's totally okay for most things, you will need to expand your network from a professional career standpoint. Reach out to your school's career center and find out about networking or alumni events. Attend those to build connections that are already working in the field of computer science. Also reach out to your advisor or professors and ask them to connect you to their previous students who are already in the field. Also actively participate in CS and engineering clubs to make connections with seniors who will graduate much sooner than you. While being connected to your colleagues help you on the long run, they aren't really useful when you just graduate because all your colleagues are in the same boat as you. This is where alumni or senior connections that you make are critical. Not only can they guide you through the process of job application, but also provide you with the most valuable power up card you can have, a referral. A good reference will not only help you skip the initial screen and progress straight to the interview loop, but also drastically improve your chances of actually landing the job. I will never understand why only the students that are into web design or UX have online portfolios. Every student that is in CS should have one. Think of it this way. When I consider you for a job position, I don't really know you outside your resume. And your resume is the only tool you have to sell yourself to me. While resumes are great snapshots, they're quite limited in real estate. So regardless of how awesome your side projects are, you can only differentiate them so much from countless other mundane ones with a few lines of description. And this is where a quick link to a portfolio or a link to the project is immensely helpful. 
almost any project can be converted to being interactive online. And being able to interact with the project you built is so much better than just reading a couple of generic lines about it. Heck, even if your project absolutely does not lend itself to be converted to being interactive online, you can at least showcase it better in a portfolio. Sites like GitHub are free. Take advantage of them and host your projects and code online. And if you code actively, coding heat maps also tell your potential interviewers that you code actively as a habit. And that's always a plus. But these are things that you have to build over time. You won't have the same effect if you upload all your shit right after you graduate for the sake of having it online. So start early while you're still in college. Also, as you progress through college and take many courses, one thing you'll frequently come across is data protection and privacy. While you will learn many different strategies and patterns in college to protect customer data and ensure their privacy as a software engineer, using a trusted VPN provider like Private Internet Access is one way you can ensure protection and online privacy for your own data. Private Internet Access have also kindly sponsored this video. And if you're thinking, but I use incognito mode all the time in my browser, let me tell you right off the bat that private mode in browser does not prevent your internet service provider or ISP from sniffing all your browsing activity. Only a reliable VPN like private internet access can do so by routing all your traffic through a secure VPN tunnel, hiding your real IP address and encrypting 100% of your data using most powerful encryption algorithms available. And it's also zero hassle. Turn on the VPN and half a second later, everything works seamlessly. You won't even realize you have a VPN on. Also for someone like me who travels a lot and works on the go, sometimes using public internet, it is imperative to use a VPN like private internet access with a strong global server network. But of course, life's not just about work. Sometimes you gotta have fun, like watching that show you've always wanted to, but it's not available in your reason. Well, private internet access can help you with that as well. You can use them to browse through a different IP address that will enable you to view geo-restricted content that is blocked in your region. And the good news is that they've given me their best deal ever, just $2.11 a month plus three months free, which is 83% off for you guys, the viewers of this channel. Not to mention private internet access is the fastest VPN on the market right now. They have servers in 84 countries and more than 30 million users worldwide. And a trust pilot rating of over 4.6 stars, which makes them one of the best VPNs on the market. So yeah, visit piavpn.com slash utsav to get 83% off plus three months free. Link will also be in the description below. All right, I'll keep this one short. An internship is literally the easiest way to land a full-time job. Interviews for internships are also much easier and you will typically get around three months to prove your worth in a real world situation. That means you get to take your time and show off all facets of your skill sets outside just technical acumen. Things like communication, teamwork, energy, drive, curiosity, and growth potential. And if you do that well, chances are very likely that you will get a return offer to join full-time. Trust me, getting a full-time offer from an internship is way easier than going through an actual job interview. So in that sense, internship is literally the easiest job interview that will also pay you. It would be foolish to overlook getting one as a student. In fact, you should aim to land multiple internships before you graduate. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to make a video that's solely dedicated to landing internships. The final point I have for you is to prepare for job interviews while you are in school. Because ideally, you should already have job interviews lined up even before you graduate. So interviews will come in thick and fast right after you graduate, as that also aligns with most companies' recruiting schedule. Not to mention, you may have to interview on the spot at career fairs that have hiring events. So managing all those interviews and prepping at the same time is quite challenging and reduces your chances of success. Therefore, it is a much better strategy to distribute that preparation load throughout college over the four years and only focus on increasing problem solving speed and endurance towards the end. As a matter of fact, the best time to start coding interview prep is when you take your data structures and algorithms classes, because most technical interviews are basically problem solving questions that are based on college level data structures and algorithms. So prepping for them as you take those classes kills two birds with one stone. 
You start interview prep early and get a head start against your competition. But at the same time, since you practice problem solving, you'll also get better grades in those courses. It's a win-win. But the greatest benefit of doing this is that it takes off pressure when you actually graduate so you can focus on other things instead of brushing up on your fundamentals. Well, that's all for this video. Check out some of these other related videos that I think you'll also find useful. Thanks for stopping by and staying till the end. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.